excited to be here with all of you. And I'm a cybersecurity student and a very big fan of 90 music and sports. Today, I'm looking forward to exploring what makes a university life so special with all of you. And let me pass it over now to Satvika, who's joining me as co-host today. Thanks, Pa. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Satvika. I'm actually in my second year studying data science. I recently just uh, graduated. And when I'm not studying, I really enjoy playing uh, badminton, a bit of basketball. And I also learned Carnatic music when I was younger. It's great to be here with all of you today. And next, let me introduce you to our next trend marketer, Miss Andrea Abigail. Uh, thank you, Safika. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Andrea Abigail, but I prefer to be called Abby. Um, I'm in my second year and I'm focusing on psychological science. I listen to R&B music and jazz music. Um, cycling is my go-to way to unwind. Uh, I also enjoy writing poetry whenever I can, and I'm eager to share and hear from all of you about your university experiences. So let's make this a great discussion. Hey, thank you, Abigail. Um... Now it's my pleasure to interview one of my good friends, Doc. He's also studying data science like Sadvika, but he has he's very unique. He's just very unique. So Doc. Thanks for the intro, my man Paul. Um my name is Duk Chung, or you can all call me Doc. I'm just another data science in my second year students like Sadvika. Um uh, I like playing sports, playing games, meeting a lot of new people, and I really looking forward to meet all of you and learning a lot of stuff for all you today. Okay, so before we start off, like thank you all for coming for who's been here and who are, who just joined. We like to go over some rules, basic rules. So this session we aim to keep about 60 minutes or so. So please stick with us till the start to the finish to ensure you don't miss anything important today. Oh, just for your information today, today's sessions will be recorded and you can find it later on our Student Marketer LinkedIn page just in case you want to revisit any topics or if you miss part of the live discussion. Um, there are some more rules as well. So we welcome your questions and comments. Uh, please type them in the uh, any questions you have in the chat box and we will address them during the Q&A segment. And to minimize any background noise and to ensure clear audio, for all attendees, please mute your mic and unless you are speaking yeah, yeah. or have any questions to ask. And please note that the opinions expressed during this webinar are solely those of the speakers alone and they do not necessarily represent the views or policies of James Cook University, Singapore. Okay, so that's all, that's all now that we're acquainted with the housekeeping details. Now, now let's begin, but don't don't forget to move your mic, okay? Okay, okay. Okay, choosing the right university can be a big decision for everyone. And each and every one of us probably has their own idea of what makes a university great or a great university. And Abigail, I seen that you've been quite involved as a student marketer. What do you think defines a top-notch or a very good university experience? Could you share your thought with us? Um, thank you, Pao. Um, when it comes to choosing a university, I think it's really important to consider two main things. The university's reputation and its technological advancements. Imagine you're shopping for a new smartphone. You wouldn't just pick any phone, right? You'd probably check out the best ones with the best reviews and with the latest features. That's because you want something that won't just meet your needs, but will also stay relevant as technology evolves. The same principle applies to universities. A university with a strong reputation has proven its ability to provide quality education and a supportive learning environment. And this is crucial because it speaks volumes about the university's commitment to maintaining high standards. Furthermore, <clears throat> technology plays a pivotal role in today's educational landscape. A university that invests in the latest technology like advanced research, um, facilities, um, modern classrooms, and digital learning tools ensures that students are well prepared for the future. This isn't just about having the newest gadgets on campus, it's about how these tools can enhance our learning experiences, facilitate innovative research, and prepare us for a workforce that's increasingly driven by technology. So, in my view, a university that combines a solid reputation with strong technological resources isn't just offering an education. 
It's preparing us for success in a rapidly changing world, equipping us with knowledge and skills that are both relevant today and tomorrow. This combination is what defines a great university experience for me. Thank you, Abigail. And that is really interesting. The comparison really puts the in- into this per- perspective. And now, can we have our next student marketer, Doc? What are your thoughts on this topic? Thanks, Bao. Uh, I want to talk about why the student life and campus facilities are so unique and important to me. When thinking about what defines a great university, picture this. I would say this. Yes, you are moving into uh, new places. You will want something, something like spacious, or something like welcoming, right? Maybe a gym you can work out all day long. Maybe like a pool to relax a hot sunny day, or maybe just have a place that has plenty of space so you can meet up, so meet up and be friends over the weekend. Well, that is how I see a university campus. It's not just about buildings and the classrooms, but it's also about creating an environment. Where you feel like a second form, you know? Good universities invest in making sure that their campuses have a, a lot of vibrant spots where students can hang out, you know, can hang out together, study together, and probably um, come out of it, you know? So, like, this spot can be anything from coffee shops or like green parks or pretty much only common area with like good, huge, good Wi Fi, you know? So yeah, also similarly, think about facilities like labs, libraries, and sport complexes. These are all just add-ons. They are pretty much essential for, you know, uh, to help us to learn and grow together as one, you know. They offer us a huge opportunities to try out new things. Participation in clubs, in teams, and also really dive into our own interests. Uh, a welcoming atmosphere where you feel supported and motivated can make huge differences. It's about feelings that you belong to a community that's all about pushing forward together, learning from each other, and of course, building skills that aren't just academic. They're also about life too. So for me, a university that takes pride in its students' life and facilities, ensuring that they're top-notch, basically, and welcoming is crucial for all me. It helps us do our best, not just in our studies, but also in our own personal uh, development as well as growth. And that's what really enriches the university experience, making it so much more than just attending your class, you know. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I really like how you focused on what the campus offers. Uh, personally, for me, it's a lot about looking ahead. Uh, I'm thinking about the kind of job I want after graduation and the skills I need to successfully um, succeed or hopefully on a good salary, right? That's the dream. Uh, so that's why during my time in JCU, I took part in a lot of leadership roles. I was previously part of the Wall Street Club and the Student Council as well and currently part of the Student Marketer as, as well even after graduating. And also, you need to think it of uh, getting ready for a big race. Uh, to win, you just don't have to be fast, but you need the right shoes. You need to know the course, you need a plan. And university is a bit like that, but for your career. It's not about learning from books, but also about practicing how you communicate well, you how you would work in teams, and even handle uh, tough situations. Uh, we also try to get uh, real-world tasks, like internships or projects, which are super helpful. Uh, they show us what work is like, and they help us get better at what we do. Plus, um, at university, we meet all different kinds of people. It can be classmates or your peers where you can learn from them, or your teachers, your lecturers, and even like the workshops you attend in student clubs in university. These connections can be really important because they would guide you and they would also give you some advice. And sometimes they also help you find opportunities that would be later on useful for your career as well. So I think a great university will help you not only prepare just for your exams, um, and it's not just about lectures, but also everything that comes after that. It should help you build your skills, your confidence, and the connections that make you ready to go out there and do well um, in your job or whatever else you choose to do in the future. 
Thank you, Satvika. That's really well put. And there's a lot that goes into making a great university experience. From getting a good reputation, ranking to living on campus, what kind of facilities the university has to offer, what kind of soft or hard skills are relevant to the current trends that are available in the university and students' ability to get a job in different countries, different environments. And now, thanks again to our student marketers for sharing your view. Now, we're going to start a lively debate. We have two big, two interesting questions that often sparks discussion about university life. That's right. Uh, our first question is curriculum content versus practical experience, which is more crucial for a great university experience. Um, let's invite our student marketer, Dup, on what's his stance on this. Thank you, Sabika. When it comes to this, I'm a big believer in practical experience. It's like learning how to swim, you know? You don't fully get it until you're actually in the water swimming. This is like especially true in areas like engineering, science, and healthcare. Having hands on hand labs in simulation is the crucial key. They push us past just knowing the theory, right? They instead we can actually get to work with real materials and see the real results. This kind of hands-on hand practice practice build our skill together. Uh, as well as prepare us for the real world. Just like swimming, you only get better by just by jumping into the water and just swim, you know? Mm, I, I, I get where you're coming from, Doc, but uh, about the importance of the practical experience, it's definitely crucial, but I also think we can't overlook the fundamental role of a core curriculum. Imagine you're planning to build a house, you wouldn't just start without having solid materials and a good plan, right? Like, that's what our coursework is like. It lays the foundation in any field, but let's take computer science because we take it, right? Um, as an example, you need to have a strong grasp of the basics like programming, fundamentals, and how computers actually work. These, <clears throat> sorry, these aren't just academic theories. They're the tools we use to approach and solve real problems. So understanding these principles deeply from the start help us apply them more effectively when we move to more complex projects or innovations. And while it's fantastic to get hands-on and dive into the practical world, the concepts that we learn in our classes are what guide us. They are like the blueprint that can help us navigate and handle tougher challenges as we advance in our studies and into our careers. It is this blend of solid foundational knowledge and a practical application that really prepares us for the future. Thank you for your insights, Abigail. And personally for me, I think it's really about finding the right balance. I like cooking myself, so imagine you're cooking your favorite meal. You need a quality ingredients, similar to our curriculum, and good cooking skills, which represent the practical experience we gain through maybe our assignments we do, our weekly practicals, or our exams to measure our like knowledge. If you have a great ingredients but lack the skills, the meal won't be good. Likewise, even top chefs need the right ingredients to create a great dish. It's the same with our education. We need a solid theoretical knowledge from our courses, and we also need to apply this knowledge through practical experiences like labs, internships, assignments, projects for like IT students like myself. And both aspects are crucial. If we focus too much on one and not the other, we might not be fully prepared for what challenges ahead. The right mix of knowledge and application is key to success. Both as we graduate and as we face more complex challenges in our careers. Now, Satvika, what are your thoughts on this balance? Do you favor one over the other? How do you see the importance of combining both? Um, absolutely. Uh, finding balance is definitely crucial. However, if I were to prioritize, I would slightly tilt towards the practical experience part. Um, let's consider pilot trainings and simulations, simulators, right? It's not identical to flying a real life plane, but then it closely simulates the real world scenarios, uh, challenging the skills. Similarly, hands-on practice, like internships or projects, that would allow us to translate the classroom knowledge into practical skills. It would actually equip us to tackle um, the real world challenges more confidently in your work's workplace, for example. 
great points from us, all of our student marketers. And for the first question, now we'll move on to the second question. Campus facility versus campus culture. What's more crucial for enhancing university life? Now let's start with Abigail. Thank you, Pao. Um, <clears throat> for me, campus culture is like the soul of university life. I personally am in InnoJCU, which is the Indonesian club, and I spend most of my time there hanging out, eating the same food with the same type of people that I'm familiar with back at home. And it's like being part of a big family. Like you have all these facilities in the world, but without a supportive, vibrant culture, it just feels empty. Um, the friendships, the events, and the traditions like make long-lasting memories. Yeah, actually, I agree. Um, I'm grateful on the importance of culture, but but I also think facilities play a huge role when it comes to this. There are like tools you need to do things, you know. Clubs, libraries, sports, and other complexes that enriches our learning and, of course, our personal growth also, you know? Yeah, I think both of you are very essential aspects, and I think it's comparing the heart to the lungs. You can't live fully without either. A university needs a modern facility to support learning and a warm culture to nourish the spirits of the students. Uh, true. It's actually the combination that makes university experience complete. Um, but then if I were to choose a strong uh, campus culture fosters a sense of belonging um, that facilities cannot, uh, cannot alone offer. So to me, a campus culture is more important. Now, thank you everyone for all your lively and colorful answers. This debate has really shown us many sides of what makes a university life amazing now i'd like to ask our student marketer the final question very important question what makes james cook university so special and let's start with abigail again okay um for me jcu <clears throat> singapore has received the prestigious edu trust star certification so it demonstrates its commitment to a quality education that's why it's special to me because i want to be sure about the institution's reputation um thanks thanks abigail um duck what's your stance on this for me jcu singapore of course has a vibrant international community with extension from various different countries you know that's so special to me as i very value the cultural diversity and also the global exposure in my form and actually for my education technically you know now satika um for me jcus offers um, a real campus experience with proper facilities um, I took part in all of the leadership roles that was available to gain a lot of experience on how a uh, leadership role works. And to my surprise, I learned a lot. I, um, in the, during my time in the Wall Street Club, I even uh, managed to make a lot of industry professionals connections and even organize my own event and, um, and also ensure like a large student volume also attended. So that's why it's special to me. I learned a lot uh, during my time in JSUS and I seek a university that would feel like another university, not just uh, would feel like a university, not just a building. Wow. Very great insights and thank you all for sharing. And now it's my turn. When choosing a university, right, we all seek something that's unique and aligned with our goals and values. Like James Cook University, I've been through many universities, but only James Cook offer me a Bachelor of Cybersecurity and they allow you to finish only in two years. When I first joined James Cook, there's many things such as I joined as a president of the football club. I get to meet many new people, many new cultures from all around the world. And I get to do office tours where I can go meet other business, where I get the tour how they operate and many different professors that taught me throughout the years. James Cook is a place where learning tries, opportunity abounds, and every student's journey is valued. Exactly. It, it's what makes going to university here so 
unique and valuable as well uh thanks uh, a lot everyone for sharing your thoughts and adding so much to our discussion today now it's time for the q and a so we have already seen some questions in the chat but if you have more questions for us uh we are happy to answer them you can type them in the chat box and we will answer them one by one okay so i see the first question there how do you balance academics and personal interests this balance okay so i i can answer this question like you can schedule your learning or your classes like based on your like jc you offer you like you can admit your own class so you know the timing for your classes and for personal interest we have many clubs in our university so personally i love to play football so i joined football club and the events will be like mostly after school or after most of the class so you have time for both your classes and your interest in the clubs or maybe outing on saturday sunday rep singapore reputation is the learning is difficult but if you plan your own time or you plan your own timetable very efficiently you can do things you like with great learning experiences I want to add on to that. I think that yeah, of course, as Pau said, like time management, but it's also knowing what you can take because I wasn't the type of person to take to, to go at any opportunity. I am in student council and in student marketers and in Indo JCO, and so it's and I'm also always playing or singing for a music club. So it's knowing your balance of what is too much and when do you also need to have time to focus on your studies. and knowing just that balance and like you get into the groove of it of course at first you don't necessarily find it but then slowly when you have that pendulum going then you then you find your own sort of balance yeah yeah that's for me yeah. and i'm also similar to abigail actually i did take part in a lot of um clubs and leadership roles but then for me there's something called club drive right so what i would suggest is to first look in whether you actually like the club before joining and also pick your subjects such that there's a balance it's a mix of hard and easy subjects and not just straight up hard subjects or not straight up easy subjects then you will suffer later on so take a take pick the subjects such that there's a balance and maybe try joining one club first and see how you like it and and because clubs here you it's there's no commitment right so you you basically explore first if you actually like the club and then you take on the leadership role slowly that's how you manage your studies and your personal interest at the same time okay so let's move on to the next question um as an international student how do you suggest we integrate into the university culture uh duck do you want to answer this question sure uh i would say that Uh, at the at the beginning, right, you will find some difficulties when it comes to getting used used to our to our university culture. But like, uh, like Sabika Abiku say, uh, said before before for the previous question, joining clubs as well as joining like activities is a great way to adapt the university, you know, university culture. Because when you join these kind of events, there will be you will have a higher chance to make new friends. As well as learning a lot of new things, like how does like how does like the events works here? How does the people talk talk to each other? Like you know that you know that how do people communicate to each other and stuff. You know, it's fairly. It's I would say it's it's not a hard when you when you when you start to get used to this. You know, like joining our clubs, and maybe also also like uh also like. Doing like a uh, group activities in our classroom also can be a great thing. Great way to adapt uh, into get this our university culture. Also, I'll I'll add on to Doc like real life example, like how I met Doc. Cause like you don't need to be scared. You just need to be friendly, and you sometimes you don't need to approach them. They will approach you. Or you can just find the loudest guy in the room and just approach him. Hey, 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 like hey, 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 h
Okay, I am. Mo- yeah. I think I want to add on. I think I want to add on to distract from these two from from arguing back and forth. Um, well, for me personally, um, to integrate like your university culture, I mean, like for me, it took me a while as well, considering that I also didn't know anybody here, and it just honestly started from like compliments and like just like see who would want to be a friendly face to you. It, but it, it takes like a while to build that confidence, of course. But eventually, you'll find the people who then also um, respond the same. And I think from there, then you know that you could also create very growing and healthy friendships with those people that you just met. So yeah, that's it for me. Okay, um, we gotta move on. Uh, Sabika, do you have anything to add to this? Oh no, we can. Oh, we can move on to the next class question. We can move on to the next question. Okay, what's the uh, what's the question? Uh-huh. So the next question is about how we are all from different backgrounds, mm-hmm. and how will university help us? You know, overcome our background differences on a single platform. You know. So, I mean, as you can see, like all four of us right now, we four are from different backgrounds, and and during the, the preparation of this webinar, we we mostly met on Zoom online, and it was quite you know we just had like conversations here and there, and I mean uh, because our we have a common language English, right? I guess that's the main uh, thing, and and it's just about I mean personally, I'm an introvert, and I don't. You know, talk as much as the others, uh, but then even like listening to the conversation is, uh, it would definitely uh, help you gain a lot of things of how people are, how what they're talking about, and you know different things like that. So personally, it's it's just about doing what you uh, feel is right. Who like you might um, feel uh, more connected to someone in in the university despite different backgrounds. So that's how friendships are made, and this is my perspective on this. But um, any of the student marketers have any more to add on? Can uh, add no, on as well. No, I, I, I definitely agree with that. Like, it's just like I think the also like sometimes because like you don't know, like you don't want to be disrespectful or do something wrong. But I think like you know, like for me, for example, I'm not used to like shaking someone by left hand or giving something by left because we think it's disrespectful. But if somebody from a different like country or culture like did that to me, I wouldn't like take it as like, oh, they're disrespecting me. I would take it as like, oh, like I think just, you know, just needing to adapt first and also be yourself at the same time. It can really like help you like just to find friends also within different cultural backgrounds for me. Um, Doc, do you have anything to say? Hmm, not really. I agree to both of you all. Like, but I can add this though. If despite of some of us have a different cultural background, this doesn't mean that some of us may might have a common interest that you can that you can talk with. Like, for example, me and Paul. The reason why we met because we play volleyball and we both love we both love to play volleyball. You know, that's why we friends in the first place because both of us love to play volleyball together, and that's how we friends. Ignoring the part that I was loud. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, that's all. I I can really add to that. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of questions, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, good. good. We actually were <laughs> we actually were expecting this. Wow. Okay. Okay. Anyway, but all anyway. of them are good questions. Too. Yeah. True. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, Pao, do you have time. anything to add on, or we can move on to the next question? I already Maybe. answered the question, so let's move okay. on. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let's next move one. On. Okay, okay, okay. Next, next, so, next, next. Okay, how have single. you seen university respond to student feedback authentically? Um, I think the student emails. Uh, every time there's like a complaint from a student side, the university will respond back through an email. For example, uh, an example from our university was there. I think there was some complaint about the canteen, and after um, a while, the university did respond back through an email. Saying that you know the canteen is improved now, so I think it's mostly the emails or the student desk is always. I mean, in the the front office is always there for students to freely you know communicate with them or uh, have if they have any complaints to uh, give they can uh, go ahead to the student the front desk at the university. This applies to any university, I think, not just. But if, 
if worst case scenario both doesn't work there's always also student council that we can always refer to and they usually just will take it immediately write it down and then they will forward it when they have their meetings as well if you have any problem just don't email the university on friday because it would take them <laughs> one to three business days to answer your emails so please be yes just just email them like monday to wednesday please keep yes. logical please, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please please plan this uh, before you like yeah don't, don't send the email like last minute like i was like it takes like what three business days to send because mm-hmm. our university has a lot of stuff to do so yeah. they're not always available so we should sort of some respect any else i think we spy right okay yeah we go to the next question does extra curricular activities enhance your university experience? Definitely. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. yes. Who wants to speak first? Who wants to speak first? We, we already had said this before on the previous question, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, we're like... all quite active, even if extroverted, introverted. Yes. Like, I even know Satvika's friends because they also told me, oh, she used to be in student council as well. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> So like very much like so if you like are in activities there's some people that like go out in and out also from like the clubs or whatever right um, and usually like it's then you realize like how interconnected you all are and then like then you can grow with like having more friends I guess so, yeah that's yes. for me I agree to that to us yeah so is the admission hard does it require a lot. <laughs> Uh, for this one, it, it's very country dependent. See, no I lie. Uh, I think you might as well go to our uni buddy. <laughs> yes. And discuss with any of this, the staff. Yes, this is not really related to our topics we have today. So. <laughs> yeah, Vimala. Yeah, right. Yeah, I I can add in if you don't mind, students. Yes. Yeah, so get, getting into the university definitely has some entry requirements in place, academic as well as English proficiency wise. Yeah, so like what a student said, country wise, it, it, it differs. So if you want to have more accurate answer to it, you can share your academic documents with us. Uh, and we'll be able to get back to you whether it is hard for you or requires a lot out of you yeah usually uh, uh, it is quite simple let's say you need a level equivalent to get into a bachelor's and if your a levels are in english medium that suffice an english proficiency as well yeah and 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 it differs from country to country so yeah f- feel free to drop an email to us at our admissions email id you will be able to see it on our website and we should be able to do a pre-assessment and get back to you Thank you yeah, so much. Thank you. thank you so much, Joe. Thank you so much for answering this question for us. Because <laughs> you would be clueless. Um, okay, yes. let's move okay, on to next the question. other questions. Out of the five student marketers in this chat, five. Sorry. I thought we um, four. Does okay. anyone have any aspirations of working in Singapore for the long term? Any of y'all? I... <laughs> okay, for me, it's a no for me. Out of others. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I definitely do. It's just usually just like see how it goes. You never really know. I think, but a lot of students, obviously, who have come from international schools, I think their aim is always to find a job here. True, true. Yeah. Singapore has the best like working opportunities out of all the world, other countries, but it's in Southeast Asia. So yeah, uh, I think it's a matter of are we going to find a job here? Because I think we all want to stay here long term, but are we gonna find a job? It's up, mean, up to it's up it's up yes. to us though. Yes. It's up to us. But for me, I probably do masters something in the future. So yeah. <laughs> uh anyway, uh next Wait, question. Wait, Safika, you've been here in Singapore oh, yeah. for so long, correct? Oh, yeah. How how yeah. How, um, you, how has that been? Yeah. Okay. For me, uh, I'm not a PR or Singaporean, so. Uh, in terms of like, for example, for medicine and stuff like that, I do not have an advantage or upper hand. And to answer authentically, I mean, local universities and private universities. I mean, in terms of uh, the rep- in terms of the ranking, 
the local universities are higher but however it depends on the person uh, ha- uh, person's nature how hard they're willing to work for a job so for me what i did was i uh, i joined all these all these leadership roles right so my first goal was to make connections so through connections one thing i learned a lot about the job market so first you have to decide for yourself which field you want to get into and see which country is suitable for that field and then you have to start your application at least 6 months in advance so these are the main three things i learned from them and um also like currently if i have to be honest currently the job market in uh, singapore is very uh, hard so i i'm not sure um, and uh, right now i'm doing my masters so i haven't been applying to jobs yet but yes i do um, plan on staying in singapore at long term in um, in terms of job and i would say the first thing you do is have as many connections as you can so that you will um it, it, so that you're a step closer to uh, compared to the other applicants who have applied for the same job so yeah that would be my stance on this yeah just to add on a bit yeah basically make a linkedin account and put all your achievements there just to start and if also you don't know, you... know if you don't know where to start student marketers have a linkedin account which you can also follow yes yeah. follow us and we can help you a lot Anyway, next question. Mm. Maybe, uh, oh my, where is this? Obviously, uh, are there any cases where you face challenge? Internship position with the nature of the degree being from foreign private university instead of a local university. I think that's what Safika was just talking about. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. Okay, you so can refer to that. Uh, yeah, uh, moving on. Next question. How do alumni contribute to preserving authenticity in their university experience? I don't know how to pronounce that. Okay, anyway. <laughs> duck, lovely duck. It's alumni. Um, yes. Wait. <laughs> wait, let me just... Hold on. I think, like, especially, like, coming to visit and sharing, like, their experience of how the university has changed them to where they get into the point now. Like, even for me, I'm still alumni. We're all alumni of, like, our high school, right? And so I even I even go back every now and then to, like, show my support for my old, um like, high school and, like, per- like perform, sing, just to show that, like, I actually benefited from going to this, like, university or high school. And, like, you could see other students that be like, wow, can't believe there's... Even after they graduated, they still give all that effort. But yeah, that's how I I experience even being a alumni just as a high schooler. But for university, not so sure. How do you guys? What do you guys think? Um, I mean, I'm a, I just graduated, so technically, I guess I am an alumni. So I <laughs> part of this webinar. So and also, I think a lot of student marketers who are alumni uh, as well who are currently in the chat and. They either contribute by volunteering, you know. Sometimes, if if the student council is, uh, you know, out of volunteers, they might also call an alumni to help out. Yeah, I guess alumni is always in contact with the university, either through student clubs or like group chats, etc. So they can always help out university any anytime they're free or like willing to help out. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, do you think? You have enough time to sharpen your ambition while you have to study. This is a comparison between normal universities that usually take three or four years. Okay, so honestly, since in JSU it's two years, it's quite difficult to balance uh, both at the same time. But then if you, but then it's basically time management. If you are able to follow your schedule accordingly, so it's the main thing is make sure you don't fall behind. Uh, put schedules for every week such that you complete your assignments on time. Then I'm pretty sure you you would be able to balance. But in terms of uh, sharpening your ambition, I still think that uh, you should still focus on your studies more for the time being. Because if you get distracted a bit with something else, it might affect your performance academically. So I would personally say that if you are a Good in time uh, management, then you can, you know, have a balance. But um, I would still suggest you to focus on your studies for two years. 
and other student marketers do you have anything to add on to this question i have no. one word i have one word to uh, help you with this don't procrastinate a lot of students yeah. are procrastinating a lot don't don't or else they have to how to say this or you have to do a lot of work in last minutes and which is something that you don't want trust me i've been there <laughs> anyway that's all i can say to others okay so uh, let's move on to the next question uh, may i know what uh, are the chances of graduates getting jobs abroad are there various opportunities offered from the university itself so yeah like i said it depends on the country the current job nature and what you are uh, looking forward to apply to so uh, that's the main three things and you have to apply to a lot of jobs uh, like i said previously at least 6 months in advance so that you can um, secure a job by the time you graduate and also there is the student career service for jcu um they are in the new student they're located in the new student hub and you can also email them uh and they would help you out with resumes or any other career advice you want from them like they are uh someone you can reach out to for more clear answers than compared to students and i think i think i have something to add on to that i think it helps that like a lot of universities have like events for like networking especially like with other like what like other corporate like um what do you would call it um companies yes sorry my mind went blank um but with other companies that they also like do sponsorship so i guess like using those opportunities and going to those events and like pushing yourself to like you know show your link then show what you've done what you're here for like i think there's a possible chance of like you getting like a job abroad um even for me still i i now like just strive and focus on like building up my linkedin showing how like active i've been for like the past year or so and just keep on building that and hopefully like i do get also messages from people from different countries asking if i'm open to a job yet even to this point but uh obviously still learning so i mean it's honestly just about networking you just got to socialize it out that's all i can say from my side how duck would you like to add on to anything nothing much to be honest i just i just like you guys say just building connection building your be your uh, profile in linkedin instagram any other social media build your academic achievements and stuff make your good cv and stuff with that you have no problems with it at all to be honest mm. also building your skills also building, building your skills like daily life skills like communication stuff also that's important yes yeah. how anything no no <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. Uh, then let's move on to i think this will be our final question Yes. Yes, it is. How do you find authentic connections with peers and faculty in your university experience? Shall does anybody want to start or shall I go first cuz I got a lot of things to say about this. <laughs> uh, if you yeah, have a lot of things to say then just say it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um I think the only way to find authentic connections is to just genuinely be honest. Obviously It's not all sunshines and rainbows one moving abroad and two going to a place that you don't know and don't have any friends. So as long as you at least find even one friend that you can be honest to and that you are honest with asking for help and guidance and like just try to communicate every single thing that you're feeling or thinking about. I think from there that that's where you're like Oh, I may have found like an actual like authentic friend. But when it comes to like people and like faculties in the university, it takes a while because honestly, you you still you have the mindset of like they are staff, you are still a student, but you realize as you grow more with an age that like oh, actually they still want to be young and I'm trying to grow and be more mature. So if anything, I should be looking up to them like James our lovely James. Uh we have a lot of fun with him. Um we also do a lot of jokes. It's like it's sometimes scary at first of course to make jokes with like people who are supposed to be like above you, right? But then as you get more familiar with the faculty and the staff, 
like then you get to a certain level of comfort which is really nice and that's where you have that authentic connection with the faculty and members does anybody else agree <laughs> yes yeah obviously yes yes obviously. i have I think- something to add on as well so uh, for me authentic uh, connections with other students is three areas the old student hub the new student hub and the canteen seating uh, sitting area so what happens is basically you join a class uh, your first uh, i would suggest is to find some friend that you can you know sit with for lunch or something then they would introduce you to their friends and they would introduce you to their friends so that's how i knew people around campus and yeah and and then if you're from the same major as well and let's say they joined like three or uh, two trimesters ahead of you you can ask them oh which subject should i take first which one is which subject is better which elective is good good for me and things like that and because they took the subject before they would just answer you honestly they would be like oh this elective oh oh my god it's really good the lecture is so nice you should take it or they'll be like oh the subject is so hard like don't take it as an elective you'll just struggle or something like as like that so i would i think it's just based on how much you socialize with people you need even despite of whether you're introvert or extrovert you need to come out of your comfort zone to you know make more meaningful connections around campus and also learn more about the subjects that you're going to take or about your major itself yeah yes yeah, for and, years right you don't need to just stay in campus just to find like good friends you may find friend on campus and you may go like hang up outside not only in university peers and like you can find from from anywhere maybe you go like you go out with your university friend and you go to some restaurant and maybe you find another friend from university and you'll be like oh you come to this restaurant you get close and you go out a lot but mostly from my experience i met people in university mostly outside not in the university you just find them anywhere singapore is a very small place you can find people anywhere yeah so about for coffee just stay close to like the nice stuff like james That's, that's that's all. Yes, we all legit. Only She's only the, the nice boss. stuff is it? Only the nice stuff is oh, it? Only the nice stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only nice stuff is yes. yes. We love you, James. <laughs> yeah. Uh okay, <laughs> uh I think we have one more question actually. Someone just said. Yes. How do you How secure, do you secure in- internship as international students? Okay, for this one <laughs> I think it's based on yourself. It's not True. like we can connections. answer it for you. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, mostly it's connections. Yeah, you yes. need to, uh, you need to. Maybe you can join. Like, uh, I mean, you can ask. You can seek to the student careers office, or you can join academic clubs, where they would bring some industry professional from outside to conduct a workshop for you. So you make connections with them, and you you basically learn about the. job market or even like i think jcu also conducts its own like career events as well so make sure to follow your student emails and like join as many opportunities you come across yeah it's all about connections so the more the an industry professional knows you the more you're uh, likely you are to secure an internship so it's all about the connections basically I, I don't think yes, it's about secret. connection. Just connection. It's just like you need to build yourself to be interesting enough for them to see what you are capable of. Not just like you go have like, connections, yeah. but you can't do anything at all. Build yourself, then get connections. Yes. Yeah. Get to build like you have to make yourself unique. Like why they want to hire you instead of other people, you know? Like make yourself unique. Yes. So, so you have more chance. Summer, in in summary, what you're saying is like personality higher as well. And other than like connections, talent, talent, mm. talent. talent. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I think it's almost time, so I think we cannot answer any question. Yeah. So thank yes. you, everyone. Like thank you, student marketer Doc Arigel and Satika for your answers and your view on our today webinar. What makes a great university in Singapore? And now, as we're ending, we want to empower all of you to take actions in your university journey. Reflect on today' insights and consider how they align with your aspirations and values.
uh, sorry, I was muted. So choosing the right university is uh, definitely an important decision, and your actions now can shape your future. Uh, take proactive steps to research your universities, visit different campuses, and talk to the current students and alumni as well. And remember, there's like a very big decision for you to make. Or if you're a parent, you can make it for your children. <laughs> and it's important to choose the university where you feel like you're very supported and you're inspired to grow there. Thank you for joining us today, and we encourage you to take lessons learned from this webinar, all the answers you heard from us, to apply them to your university decision making. Also, don't forget we have more webinar like this. Our next webinar is tips for adapting to life in Singapore. So. If you just join our university, or you want to know how to stay in Singapore, you can join our next webinar. It will be held on 30 June at the same time from 12 to 1 p.m. Singapore time. It's a very great way to understand. 28. It's 28 June, buddy. Oh, it's 28th June. They changed the date. Yes. I thought you realized already. Come on. Okay. <laughs> continue. Continue. Also, like, please remember to follow us on our student marketer uh, community social media platforms uh, such as Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn uh, for the recorded link of today's webinar session. Until we meet again, take care and keep striving for those amazing university experiences and bye for now. What are the services offered by Unibuddy? You, you can text us and we'll answer what you needed. Yes, yes. The last question. Yes, and last, 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 last question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just so you know, your future is in your hands and let's take action and choose your university that's right for you. See you next time. I'll see you bye in the bye. next webinar. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Bye. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye. See you on campus. Bye. See you all on campus, baby. Bye. <laughs>